Hello teacher, hello student, welcome to today's lesson on the methods of dimensioning. In our previous lesson we have seen the theory of dimensioning from which you have learned about size dimensions, location dimensions and selection of dimensions. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. Size dimensions are used to define length, width, height, diameter, and radius of circles and arcs. Location dimensions are used to locate the center of circles and other key features. The purpose of a drawing is to convey to the workman the form, construction, and size of an object in order to manufacture or assemble it. Without dimensions, an object cannot be produced accurately. The basic rules for selection of dimensions are do not over dimension. Give the diameter of circular shapes, the radius of arcs and fully dimension each part. In our today's lesson, we will discuss the arrangement of dimensions and the methods of dimensioning on standard features. In technical drawing, objects can be dimensioned in various ways based on their characteristic and features. At this level of technical drawing, we will discuss only the commonly used methods of dimensioning, namely chain dimensioning and datum dimensioning. Let's discuss each of these methods one by one with some details. Chain dimensioning is a method of dimensioning used when a series of dimensions is given on a point-to-point -point basis. As you see on the screen, chain dimensioning is where each point is measured to the next. Point B is measured from point A. Point C is measured from point B and point D is measured from point C. This method uses minimum space on a drawing area. The problem with chain dimensioning is that each measurement relies on the accuracy of the previous measurement. In other words, it accumulates tolerance errors. A tolerance is the total amount a given dimension may vary. Chain dimensioning is only used when the function of the object will not be affected by these errors. Well, students, the second method of dimensioning is datum dimensioning. It's also called baseline dimensioning. Do you know what a datum is? Let's see. A datum is a point, line or surface of an object from which the location of other features is taken. Two surfaces, two center lines or a surface and a center line are typical examples of datum. As you see on the screen, this figure shows the two surface datum are used. In this one, the two center lines are used and in this one, a surface and a center line are used. Datum dimensioning is a method of dimensioning used when a single reference point is used for all dimensions in a single direction. Point A is declared as the reference point of datum. As point B, C, and D are all measured relative to point A, not to each other. Since datum dimensioning uses only one reference point, the errors cannot be accumulated. 
The disadvantage of datum dimensioning is that it requires more space on the drawing for all the dimension lines. Well, students, let's practice what we have just learned. The view of an object is given on the screen. First, identify the datum lines and then dimension it using datum dimensioning method. Welcome back. Did you do well on the exercises? I am sure you did. Let's do it together now. There are two surface datum on the given view. By using this datum as starting point, we can dimension the view in two directions. Well, students, there is another method to add dimensions to a drawing. 
This is called combined dimensioning. Do you know why we use this dimensioning method? Let's see. Combined dimensioning is a combination of chain and datum dimensioning. As you see on the screen, the datum dimensioning is given in a red color and the chain dimensioning is shown with blue color. This method uses less space than datum dimensioning and accumulates less tolerance errors than chain dimensioning. Well students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are doing fine. Now let's discuss how to dimension of standard features. Let's begin with circular features. Circular features can be dimensioned by the diameter of the circle containing it. The numerical value of the diameter is always written after the diameter symbol. Circles can be dimensioned in different ways. An arc is usually dimensioned by giving its radius. The dimension indicating radius should be preceded by the letter R. The center of the arc is denoted by a crosshair and the dimension is usually used with an arrow or a leader line pointing towards the center. These are some more examples of arc dimensioning. Non-circular or irregular curves can be dimensioned from datum lines as shown in this figure. A regular curve can be described and dimensioned by showing the construction or naming the curve as shown in this figure. Well, let's do some activities. The view of an object are given on the screen. Dimension the views correctly.
Welcome back. Did you get it right? I'm sure you did. Let's see the solution together now. Well, I hope you have done great. Students, let's now discuss how to dimension chamfers, angles, holes, and screw threads. You probably do not know these terms, so let's start by defining them. Chamfers are beveled edges connecting two surfaces. Chamfers are normally dimensioned by their angles and linear length. When specifying an angle and a linear length, the linear length is the distance from the indicated surface of the part to the start of the chamfer. When a chamfer is 45 degrees, it may be specified as a node as shown in this figure. An angular dimension is used to specify the amount of degrees between two lines that are not parallel. When dimensioning an angle, the dimension line will be an arc centered at the vertex of the angle. Hole dimensions are used to denote drilled hole information. Holes can be dimensioned in several ways depending upon the design and manufacturing requirements. But a little line Pointing to what the center of the hole is, the most commonly used method of hole dimensioning. A screw threads can be external and internal. External threads are dimensioned by giving the threaded length and nominal diameter preceded by letter M. Internal threads are dimensioned by giving the threaded length depth of drilled hole before threading and nominal diameter preceded by letter M as illustrated. Well students, let's do some activities to check how much you have understood the lesson so far. The views of an object are given on the screen. Dimension them correctly.
Welcome back. Have you completed the exercise? Very good. Again, let's see the activity together. Well, students, next we will discuss how to express repetitive features, how to dimension slopes and tappers, and the relationship between scale of a drawing and dimensioning. Repetitive features are dimensions that are marked to indicate the number of locations for particular measurements. Repetitive features or dimensions may be specified by using the symbol X along with the number of times the feature is repeated. For example, if more than one hole of the same size is used in an object, it's not necessary to dimension each one of them. One hole is dimensioned and a note specifies the total number of holes with that dimension. A slope is a line that makes an angle with the horizontal plane. It's expressed as a ratio of the difference in the height at right angle to the baseline at a specified distance apart. A tapper is the ratio of the difference in the diameter of two sections perpendicular to the axis of a cone to the difference between these sections. Tappers can be dimensioned giving the length, one diameter, and the tapper as the ratio. Drawing of very big objects cannot be prepared in full size because this would be too big to accumulate on the drawing sheet. Drawings of very small objects also cannot be prepared in full size because this would be too small to draw and to read. A convenient scale is chosen to prepare the drawings of big as well as small objects proportionally to the scale which fits to the drawing paper. Therefore, scales are used to prepare a drawing at full size, reduced size or enlarged size. Regardless of the scale used, the dimension figures shown on the drawing always represent the actual size of the object. Well, students, I hope you have gained a lot of concepts from today's lesson. Before we come to the end of the program, let's summarize the main points. Chain dimensioning places dimensions in a line from one feature to the next, while datum dimensioning originates from a common line or point. A circle is dimensioned by its diameter and an arc by its radius using a little line and a knot. Non-circular curves can be dimensioned from datum lines. Chamfers can be dimensioned by giving their angles and linear length. When dimensioning an angle, the dimension line will be an arc centered at the vertex of the angle. Holes are commonly dimensioned by a leader line. Well, students, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Keep on practicing on the methods of dimensioning. In our next lesson, we will learn about the placement of dimensions. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.